Are you kidding me? So I did what anyone would normally do. I downloaded the official cooler software from Gigabyte or Aorus, since Gigabyte owns Aorus blah blah blah, whatever. Thinking that now I'd be able to adjust the pump curve and the fans. Because right now under load, it feels like the PC is about to take off. And then everything starts falling apart. Are you kidding me? What the f Were they smoking something? So, I can enable it in here, but not in here. What the f And it's done. You know what? I think I'm going to do it. Yeah. First of all, I cannot manually adjust the pump curve. There are only two options available, and both are extremely high. I can adjust the fan curve manually, but the minimum is 1000 RPM. I can't put them in sleep mode, but somehow I can completely mute the fans in the freaking 0 RPM mode until the CPU cooks itself. Fuck the logic. There are some simple solutions I can do. I could connect the fans directly to the motherboard and skip the app completely. But unfortunately, I can't do that to the pump. It has no PW on cable, so I'm forced to deal with it. It's designed to work through the USB interface. Do you know what? Maybe I'll get used to the noise. It's not that big of a deal. Maybe they'll fix it in the next update. Bro, what the hell? No way. I can't. I really can't. I think I'm going to do it. Yeah. Alright. Before anything, let's make a list of what I want to fix in this software. Let's start with the basics. I want a mode to customize the pump curve. I don't want it running at 3000 RPM most of the times. I want to adjust the fans in custom mode from 0 to max. Right now I can't. I don't want the program to always be running. I want to apply the settings and never see it again. I also want some quality of life improvements. Fix the screen issues. Sometimes the screen fails and it looks like CRT for some unknown reasons. Apply the settings faster because right now it feels like I'm sending data to Mars. More customization for the screen and yeah. But you might say, how can you modify an application that already been compiled? And you know what? You can hack and reverse engineer almost anything. You just need time, experience, and the right tools. And without wasting any minute, it's hacking time. Okay, first thing I did was open the task manager to see what services the application was using. Hmm, there are a lot. Let's try a search for Aorus. There is an Aorus service already running. I think it's responsible for LCD, but let's open its file location anyway. Okay, these are the service files. There are also some DLLs. First, let's check the details of Aorus LCD service, what language it's written in, and more info, so we know how to reverse engineer it. Okay, we can see some details. The link is from Visual Studio, the language is C Sharp, and the library is .NET. So this app is a .NET C Sharp assembly, very good. And because it's a .NET assembly, we can read its content using a tool like ILSpy or DNSpy. In this case, we'll use DNSpy. We grab the .exe files and drop it into the program. And yes, we can read .exe files as well. And immediately several things pop up. The main service, Microsoft Reflection, System.io, and other namespaces. Those doesn't matter right now. And let's focus on the LCD service. And you can immediately see some things. Byte util, CVT util, init util, log util. I think these are utilities for the app itself to read and modify bytes, do bitwise operation, etc. And for now, we're just studying and analyzing how the program works. We have no idea how it functions yet. Here we have a class called CPU API. It has some interesting methods get CPU usage, frequency, etc. I think this is the main script responsible for sending and receiving hardware information. Okay, here we found a method called make CPU data, and from what I see, it writes a file called cpuinfo.ini in the DLL directory, and based on the parameters, it fills in this data, CPU name, vendor, core count, temperature sensors, and I think this file is very important, and definitely used by many other parts of the program to display the data. Why not we inspect it? Here we are in the DLL directory, and yes, there's the cpuinfo.ini, perfect. Everything matches the CPU info, vendor, temperature, usage, and everything. And you know what? Let's try overriding the CPU temperature, because the curves will follow it at the end. Here we see it reads the temperature from this method. We don't really care about it for now. We can bypass it by setting a fixed value here. Okay, let's build the application and see what's happened. Okay, wow, some progress. Everything works. 
The CPU right now shows as 40 and the pump is running at the lower speeds. You know what? We can stop here. The pump is quieter right now. And also we can connect the fans to the motherboard and control them from there. But uh, that means we can display the real temperature on the screen since we bypassed it. And honestly, I'm still not convinced. I want full control. I paid premium money for this cooler, so why not continue? Alright guys, I spent some time digging through the scripts and I think we need to search inside some other DLLs. After hours of searching, I found this very interesting DLL, UC Cooler. It's a 20 MB file and it's a .NET C Sharp assembly and it contains a ton of interesting stuff. Here we have get CPU temperature, get speed curve, max speed, save. And also here in the get CPU temperature method, we can confirm that it uses the data from CPU info.ini, which we saw and modify earlier. And that's why the temperature override trick worked. Honestly, there are many methods here, so let's search for, let's say, pump. Okay, there are many results, and look at this. Get pump mode, but it's just an auto-implemented property with a getter and setter. We also have get fan pump mode, get fan pump curve, fan RPM monitor, fan curve to point. I think this converts the curve to points. And here we have an important enum, speed mode. And look at this, all the speed modes are here. Okay, some good progress later, we found the script we're looking for, fan control. And if we scroll down, look at what we have, RB fan mode 0 RPM, quiet, turbo, RB pump mode quiet, pump mode balanced, and pump mode customized. This is the mode we want, and it's a U radio button. If we follow it, it's in hertz from radio button, and guess what? It's a system.windows.controls. What does that mean? It means we can search for it online. Here we are in the Microsoft official website and we found the important parameter, visibility enum. So what we can do now, let's go back to the script. We have several methods we could use to inject the patch. Load device, from the name I assume it runs when the device loads. Let's modify it. We can just add this line, this dot pump mode customized dot visibility and let's make it to visibility dot visible. Let's try running the app now. You really won't believe it. It worked, it really worked. We just unlock the custom mode. We can now change the curve. Okay, don't get too excited because when we hit apply, nothing happens. It seems like the app keeps skipping it. Hmm, time to dive deeper. After hours of digging, we don't want to waste any more time. So you know what? Let's try setting the customized as the default mode when loading the default settings. And let's try that. It worked. Finally. For a moment, I thought the pump can't support this mode. I can't believe they hit this option. Wow. No noise. And we can confirm that using the hardware info. We still can go below 1000 RPM though. I think we found the reason. Get fan speed limit. The minimum is hard coded to 1000. Son of a... Let's set it to zero. And it worked. I can now go down to zero. And let's try it. Oh, whoa, whoa. The pump stopped. The CPU temperature. Holy shit. <laughs> Quick note. Don't put the pump at zero RPM. <laughs> But this is proof something huge. The pump does support the full RPM range down to zero. They intentionally locked it. Okay, after some several days of testing, here's what we achieved. We unlocked the custom mode. We now have a full pump control. I can reduce the speed down to zero in custom mode for both the pump and the fans before the minimum was a thousand. And it turns out I don't need the full app running. I just need the OS service because it jobs to update things like the temperature. Also auto update must be disabled because that will override the patch. And for the other features, honestly they're not worth my time now. We fixed the main problem, we can apply the settings once and never open the app again.